Five to six weeks should be the minimum time allocated for preparation, and anything more than ten to twelve weeks becomes too taxing and draining on mind and body. If you tend towards leanness and lose fat easily, spend a solid six weeks training and dieting. If you are endomorphic or tend a bit towards pudginess and need to lose more than twelve pounds, then spend eight to ten weeks. Look at it logically. Even on the most severe diet, the maximum body fat you can possibly lose in one week is three pounds. At that rate, you could lose 18 pounds in six weeks, allowing no time for error or backsliding. Losing two pounds of fat a week is more practical and reduces the likelihood of losing muscle. If you try to lose too fast, you'll inevitably burn some muscle for for energy. If you require 3,000 calories a day to maintain yourself, and all of a sudden you reduce your daily intake to 2,000 calories, you'll lose body fat even if those 2,000 calories come from pure table sugar. I don't recommend you eat pure table sugar, as it would not constitute a well-balanced diet. What I say is pure, simple medical fact. Losing fat is a matter of calorie reduction, and all of the three macronutrients. Protein, carbohydrates, and fats contain calories. Eating too many calories from protein sources will make you just as fat as calories from carbohydrates, and that's my point. A calorie is a calorie is a calorie, no matter what the source. To lose fat, you must reduce your intake below your daily maintenance need of calories. Though it's true that increased levels of physical activity burn more calories and lead to faster weight losses, weight training is not the best way to burn up body fat. Your weight workouts should be used solely for the purpose of maintaining or increasing muscle mass. Body fat, you see, requires oxygen present in order to be metabolized for energy. However, the demand for energy imposed by anaerobic activities, such as weight training or sprinting, are so great and immediate that not enough oxygen can be supplied rapidly enough to metabolize fat for the required energy. Let me say it again, most emphatically: bodybuilding, weight training, what have you, does not use stored body fat for energy. It is only the sugar stored within the muscle itself, called glycogen, which can be metabolized in the presence of oxygen, and used for such anaerobic activities as bodybuilding. At the start of your contest preparation period, your weight training session should be very intense. Hence, your aerobic activity should be of relatively short duration. Bicycle riding of six to ten miles a day at a slow, moderate. Pace once or twice a week, combined with or alternated with jogging, maybe a mile and a half to two miles being adequate. As contest time nears, however, getting rid of body fat becomes an ever increasing concern, and the intensity of the weight training sessions will decrease somewhat, and the duration of the aerobic or fat burning activity increases. Increase your aerobic activity until you are bicycling at least twice a week. For 30 to 45 minutes, and running three or more miles twice a week on alternate days, I prefer more running as it burns calories more quickly. Though bicycling is an advantage, as it is less traumatic to the joints of the ankles and knees. Jogging a mile burns 100 to 120 calories, or roughly 15 calories a minute, while bicycling at a moderate pace, 8 to 13 miles per hour, burns about 8 calories a minute. Your aerobic activities should all be performed at a relaxed pace. If you are breathless, you're increasing the proportion of sugar being burned for fuel and decreasing the use of body fat. If you can't talk easily while jogging or bicycling, you are working too intensely. Perform your aerobics at what is called a conversational pace, and you will be using up to 90% fat as fuel. So reduce your pace. Enjoy yourself and burn fat at the same time. Anaerobic activity, which is what high intensity or weight training activity is, demands sugar as fuel. The worst way to get cut up is to lift weights, because weight training does not burn fat as fuel. It's a simple medical fact. It's not even open to debate. 
weight training burns sugar. And if you're not getting sugar from fruits or vegetables, cereals or grains, where's your, where's your muscle going to get sugar to continue contracting? From your own muscle. There's an amino acid contained in your muscle tissue called alanine, which will be broken down, sent to your liver, and turned into glucose. That's why carbohydrates are called protein sparing. It spares your protein from being used for energy. And you can always tell when you start using muscle for energy. Very simple. I pointed out earlier that one pound of muscle tissue contains 600 calories. One pound of fat contains how many calories? 35. Okay. Now, if you were to start burning muscle tissue for energy, how many pounds of muscle would you have to burn to get the same energy yield from one pound of fat? About six. Almost six pounds. You, you will know when you're starting to use muscle for energy because you will start losing weight very rapidly. Very rapidly, like two, three, four, five pounds a day. So let's look at the, the discrepancy here. One pound of muscle contains 600 calories. One pound of fat contains 3,500 calories. To get the energy yield from muscle that you would from fat, you'd have to burn six pounds of muscle. So it's ridiculous to go on low carbohydrate diets to get cut up because you will inevitably lose some muscle. You have to. The best way to get cut up is to go on a reduced calorie diet, reduce your daily calorie intake to below your maintenance need of calories. Again, if you need 3,000 calories a day to maintain yourself, you need 3,000 calories a day not to gain weight, not to lose weight, but maintain yourself. And all of a sudden you reduce your daily calorie intake to 2,000 calories, then you're going to be 1,000 calories proficient. Where's that 1,000 calories going to come from? Your body fat. That's what body fat is, it's stored energy. Now these 2,000 calories could be 2,000 calories of pure table sugar, and you'll still get ripped. That's right, Mike Metzger is saying you can get ripped eating pure table sugar. I'm not advocating it, please don't think of that. I bet people run out and say, wow, my brother said you'll eat pure table sugar. Theoretically, you can get ripped. You can become highly defined eating nothing but ice cream. As long as what? Your daily, your daily total calorie intake is below your maintenance needed calories. Then you have to resort to body fat for energy. I'm not advocating that because, again, it's not a well-balanced diet. Eat a well-balanced diet, but eat a reduced calorie diet, that's all. It doesn't have to be all protein. I know the majority of my fellow Mr. Olympia competitors woke up every morning during their training period, grumpy bastards, because all they had to look forward to was tuna fish and water. Anybody who goes to bed hungry and wakes up with tuna fish and water is going to be grumpy. <laughs> But I woke up in the morning always looking forward to breakfast because I had bran muffins, oftentimes cake and cookies, fruits and vegetables, really. I ate a wide assortment of carbohydrates. Often I would eat just carrot cake for breakfast and coffee. Because I knew I needed that sugar for the workout. But I, I didn't do it reckless. I knew what my daily maintenance needed calories was. And as long as I stayed below that every day, I kept a daily record of my calorie intake. I could eat that cake with impunity and not get fat. I was getting ripped as a matter of fact. I was eating ice cream at least four days a week before the Mr. Olympia contest. Again, not reckless. I knew that I had to get under 2,500 calories a day. I was averaging about 1,800. So I was burning about 700 calories a day of fat. And I was actually burning more than that because I was so highly active. I was riding bicycle up 40 miles a day. And I was literally getting cut up before my very eyes. Every day I'd wake up, I would see more definition. And the night before, I just had an ice cream. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous eating nothing but protein or tuna fish and water to get cut up. Not only is it not healthy and no fun, just ridiculous. Here's a simplified formula for Mike Mincer's training and diet plan to get ripped. 1. Determine calorie needs. Calculate your daily calorie needs with a slight surplus to maintain muscle mass. 2. Training phase. 
Start with intense weight training. Begin your program with high-intensity weight training sessions, focusing on compound exercises to build and maintain muscle. 3. Diet Composition Follow the balanced diet. 60% carbohydrates 25% protein 15% fats 4. Cutting phase Begin the cutting phase 6 to 10 weeks before your target competition date. 5. Calorie Deficit Start with a 500 calorie deficit from your calculated maintenance calories to kickstart fat loss. 6. Gradual Calorie Adjustment Increase your calorie intake by 200 calories per week during the last few weeks of your cut to prevent metabolic adaptation. 7. Adjust Training and Cardio As you progress through the cutting phase, gradually decrease the intensity of your weight training sessions. Simultaneously, increase the frequency and duration of your cardio workouts to enhance calorie burning and fat loss. This formula combines calorie management, balanced macronutrient ratios, strategic timing, and a progressive approach to training and cardio to help you achieve a ripped physique similar to Mike Mincer's approach. All right, so I asked you guys to, uh, what would you add to Mike Mincer's formula for getting ripped? Here's the formula there. Um, let's see what you guys had to say. Rest is as important for your fitness journey as Jack's Blade put it, it's a three-legged chair. If one leg breaks, the whole chair falls over. All right, I'm going to have to check out uh, who that is. The most important exercise is to rotate your head 90 degrees left around a vertical axis, then rotate it 180 degrees right around the same axis, then left 180 degrees right 180 degrees. Repeat this several times. Do this every time you're offered something that will interfere with your diet slash exercise program. Wow. Okay. That's that's a great comment. So many haters out there. When you talk about hit, the ones that say it's BS are the ones who uh, never tried it. Exactly the way Mike said to do it. All right. Yeah. It worked for me. Definitely. Nice. What sort of cardio exercises did Mike do for his cutting phase? He talks about what uh, running and biking. He said he was biking like 40 miles. Uh, Mike posed every day 30 minutes in the sun. I think a lot of people forget that. If you want your muscles to look good, practice flexing them, especially the abs. Wow, okay. That's interesting. Full respect to the legend Mincer. Man, system got me big when no one else did. All right. Someone could explain me this better, please. Okay. Cut 500 calorie deficit from my maintenance level, and then the last weeks of the cut increase the deficit by 200 more. That would be 700 calorie deficit. Increase 200 calories. Yeah, it, the... The last few weeks increase uh, your deficit by 200. So you could go up to 700, 900 calorie deficit. Mike literally advocated against cutting and bulking faces. What are you talking about? What am I talking about? I'm talking about if you have some body fat and you want to get rid of it, what would my, how would Mike say to do that? So that's just that the cutting is just a, a way of saying that. Losing weight. How, how did Mike say to lose fat? Coke as a pre-workout. So like Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. All right. 20 comments or replies. BS, bro. Yep. It was the 80s. Nice. Perfect score. What have you achieved? Uh, wow. Okay. I like it. I like all the comments. I like when people go back and forth and, and these things. It's uh, I like reading them, honestly. I see actual weightlifting. Okay. Uh-huh. I add negative carbs. Negative carbs. I'm going to have to do some research on that one. Um, hmm. Yep. Ooh, vice versa, 60% protein, 25% carbs. All right. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a, it's about being in a caloric deficit. So that's dumb as hell. More expensive, less healthy, less energy. 
yeah. I mean, I used to be a carb hater myself. So um, right before I started uh, getting into Mike Mincer, I was on low carb, doing keto, all that stuff. And it did not work. Intermittent fasting. I don't know if Mike would be into uh, intermittent fasting. Um, maybe. Uh, I, I've never, if you've heard of him talking about that, uh, let me know. I've, I've never heard him mention fasting exactly. Um, but his main thing was about uh, being healthy and uh, building muscle. There's a lot of n- new research about fasting. So maybe uh, Mike, Mike actually might have, uh, might have liked that. All right, cool. Hey, thanks guys for all the comments. Uh, thanks for uh, subscribing to the channel and watching the videos. Um, I'm trying to make one at least once a week. Um, check out my shorts videos and again, Hey, thanks for watching guys. Train like Mike.